You might have heard explanations of quantum mechanics that go like this. Quantum objects can't make up their minds. Sometimes they behave like particles, localized and small, and sometimes they behave like waves spreading out everywhere. But you should be careful not to take that statement too literally. To be clear, I'm not saying that the wave story of quantum mechanics is wrong. It's not. If you crack open a quantum mechanics textbook, you'll see wave stuff all over. But when a physicist says an electron is acting like a wave, the actual meaning of this statement is quite subtle, both mathematically and philosophically. Whereas when most people hear the statement, the electron is acting like a wave, they of course imagine something much more concrete that the object stops being in one localized spot and literally spreads out in space and waves about. I'm going to explain why this straightforward interpretation can't be right. You're not going to have to take my word for it either, you'll see it for yourself. Let's look at all of this in terms of the classic double slit experiment, which is probably the context in which you've heard the wave particle duality. It's an experiment where you have an electron coming in this side, then there are two slits that the electron can go through, and finally it hits the back wall where we mark where it lands. Normally we'd imagine the electrons doing something like this, so that the electrons that make it through are all clumping up in two spots. But when we do the experiment, that's not what we see. Instead, we see this pattern, which looks kind of like a wave interference pattern. The standard explanation says that in this experiment, the electrons act like waves. The obvious way to interpret that is that the material the electron is made of physically spreads out in space and half goes through each slit. As in, half the actual mass of the electron goes through this side and half through the other. Then these two waves can interfere with each other and this interaction causes the interference pattern. Here's the first problem though with thinking of the electrons as literal waves. If the electron is in fact spreading out like this, then where does it touch the back wall? In one spot? No, right? It's smeared over the whole thing. But that's not at all what the data says. Each electron turns up in just one spot on the wall. Ah, but there's a way to explain that in the wave-particle duality story as well. The electron was a wave when it wasn't being observed, but then when it gets observed, it becomes a particle again, and therefore it shows up in just one spot on the wall. But think of what that would mean. The electron, before it's measured, is spread out everywhere, but as soon as it's at the wall, it has to pick up its mass and pull it all back together. Moving mass takes energy. Where's that energy going to come from? Not to mention other issues like, if the electron has physically spread out far over space, and it needs to pull back into this spot very quickly, then this is potentially breaking speed of light constraints. The point is, the electron is not physically splitting up and spreading out. But then, what exactly is it doing? The theory of quantum mechanics is supposed to answer that question, but it kind of doesn't. The maths of quantum mechanics doesn't talk about what the electron itself is doing at all. Instead, it talks about something called the wave function of the electron. This is a mathematical function that spreads throughout space and in this experiment happens to look very wave-like. But it's important to remember that the wave function isn't the electron itself and it's not a physical wave. When a physicist says that an electron is acting like a wave in an experiment, what they mean is that the wave function looks wave-like. If you can calculate what the wave function of an electron is, then you can figure out where the electron is likely to turn up. But what is the wave function, and how is it related to the electron at all? Does the electron just disappear when it's not being measured, and only the wave function exists? These are questions that quantum mechanics doesn't yet have the answer for. Which is why this part of physics has so much philosophical debate around it. We don't fully understand what quantum mechanics is trying to say about how the world works. Whatever it is, it's not as simple as saying that objects are sometimes acting like waves and sometimes like particles. Hey, so thanks for watching. Uh, I know I didn't go into too much detail on things like the wave function and just quantum mechanics in general, but Hopefully I'll be making more videos about that, and hopefully soon, if 
my PhD goes better this month than it did last. We'll see.